CSGO has given us plenty of happy memories and great moments. But sometimes, it also surprises us with equally shocking developments. Here are top 10 scandalous moments and incidents that shocked the CSGO fans around the world. The iBuyPower Match Fixing Scandal This is pretty old news, but it shaped the current CSGO Pro Circuit. In August 2014, I buy power were the heavy favourites to win against the underdog team Netcode Guides in the finals of CEO Pro League Season 5. But the players of I buy power were suspected of betting against their own team and deliberately losing the game in order to win skins. Drop it. The speculations of them throwing the game were brushed aside for the time being. But in January 2015, renowned esports journalist Richard Lewis presented new evidence, incriminating text messages from Derek Deborn Bourne. Valve banned all these players for an indefinite period, but later in 2016, they clarified that these bans are permanent, thus spelling the end of their careers. Boostmeister At DreamHack Winter 2014, LDLC were playing against Fnatic in the quarterfinals on overpass. LDLC were leading 13 to 3, and that is when Fnatic decided to pull a new trick out of the hat and use the infamous boost. The major and going out in the corners, that is definitely not part of the plan here for Fnatic. Olafmeister again is boosted up here. LDLC had no idea where they were getting shot from, and by the time they realized it, it was already too late and Fnatic had made a miraculous comeback. However, this boost involved pixel walking, a bug where certain textures of the game become invisible, thus granting Fnatic vision over certain areas of the map that they should otherwise have not been able to see. LDLC cried foul and called the boost illegal. The DreamHack admins discovered that the boost was indeed a bug exploit and thus ordered the match to be replayed. But Fnatic did not like this, so they just forfeited the match instead. They believed that they had worked hard to come up with this innovative trick. It's just too bad that nobody told them that what they were doing was against the rules. Because nobody knew it existed. Kudos to Fnatic for originality though. Former CS 1.6 Pro player Emil Heaton Christensen was one of the three founding members of Ninjas in Pajamas. In October 2015, NIP got in trouble because apparently they had not paid the taxes that they were supposed to. This incident kicked off an ugly spiral of more revelations. The person who was responsible was Per Lilfeld. Apparently, the organization was not profitable enough to send the players around the world to compete. As a result, the CEO did not pay the taxes that he was supposed to so that he could keep the organization afloat. Later on, upon further scrutiny, it was revealed that he might have been embezzling money from the organization and using it to go on vacations. The players had not received their salaries, nor did they receive the prize money or the money from the sale of stickers. Per was let go and while NIP made no clarifications about the allegations against him, they hinted that they might have been true. The Cloud9 Adderall Scandal In July 2015, Semfist from Cloud9 admitted that the entire lineup was using Adderall at the ESL1 Katowice that year. I don't even care. We're all on Adderall. Like this sparked a huge debate about doping in esports. ESL teamed up with the National Anti-Doping Agency to run drug tests in ESL1 Cologne. The kind of drug tests that are used in mainstream sports and Olympics. Luckily for the entire CSGO scene, the drug test results were negative for all the players and they were all clean. Thus, the matter was closed then and there. Even though this move was controversial, it turned out to be an important step in bringing esports closer to the more mainstream sports in terms of integrity. Skin betting and all the related scandals. Wherever there are bets to be made, scandals will follow. This all began with the popular streamer Mo and his escapades with CSGODiamonds.com. Mo would stream himself playing and placing bets on CSGO Diamonds, where he would actually win quite a lot. Unknown to the viewers was the fact that the odds of the bets on this side were heavily skewed in his favour to deceptively show the people that they too could win. <laughs> Kevin, what the hell? 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 Kevin, what the hell?
what just happened, dude! Carrie, look at what just fucking happened, dude! Oh my god, I'm so lightheaded! Carrie! Carrie, look at what just happened! What? what? Carrie! What? This was a gross misrepresentation because in reality, nobody would ever win as much as Mo did on his streams. Eventually, Mo and CSGO Diamonds had a fallout where they both exposed each other and it turned ugly. More of it followed when the popular Call of Duty streamer Trevor Martin started promoting CSGOLORA.com without revealing the fact that he was the owner of that betting site. Oh baby, yes it just flipped for me, holy cow, let's you go! Following this, people started to consider the legitimacy of these sites. Soon after, Valve intervened, saying that they had no business affiliations with these sites while sending out cease and desist letters, thus putting an end to the controversy. The Gaming Paradise Resort The way this tournament was marketed was too good to be true. Players were promised that they would be staying and having fun in lush resorts while also playing a tournament. Almost like a vacation, but one where you also compete. The tournament was a horrible failure as nothing worked out as planned. Technical issues aside, players didn't even have PCs to play on. That uh, the computers are traveling to the venue. What actually happened, uh, computers never came. So, uh, the gaming computers uh, never came, uh, computers that were supposed to be played on. So, uh, they changed their minds, they uh, got some other PCs that uh, weren't really for gaming. Those PCs didn't have graphic cards and uh, those arrived a bit late. So, they then tried to manage to get... But wait, it doesn't end there. The police showed up at the hotel to confiscate the passports of the players because the hotel rooms hadn't been paid for. The confusion was later cleared up and the players were given back their documents when the authorities realized that it was the tournament organizers that had booked the hotel rooms and not the players. The organizers still insisted that the tournament be played out. G2 won the event but were never given their prize money as the organizers soon filed for bankruptcy. It was a bad incident that shows how misplanned events can end in disasters. ESCA Bitcoin Mining Scandal In 2013, when the Bitcoin craze had taken over the world, ESCA too experimented and tried to implement the Bitcoin mining program in its software and used it in an internal beta to see whether rolling it out was worth it. Eventually, they decided to shut down the program because it wasn't worth it and did not benefit the player base in any way. But a rogue employee went against the company protocol and rolled it out to the player base anyway. For two weeks this continued and the ESCA paid users complained about high GPU usages even when the PC was idle. It was later discovered that this rogue employee was using the GPUs of nearly 14,000 players to mine Bitcoin for personal gain and he was able to generate nearly $3,700 worth of Bitcoin. ESCA fired this employee and publicly apologized. They were slapped with a million dollar fine by the government. In an attempt to regain the trust of their user base, ESEA poured those $3,700 that were mined into the prize pool of its next tournament and also donated double that amount, $7,400 to the American Cancer Society. At least they owned up to the mistake and compensated their users with free ESEA premium passes which they could redeem. The Fierce Tiger Incident Fierce Tiger was a Chinese CSGO team consisting of three veterans from the Chinese scene along with two new recruits. In May 2018, one of the new players, Leo, received a whack ban on his account. His team was immediately disqualified from the CSGO Asia Championship, which was supposed to start in June but Fierce Tiger had already qualified for it. Surprisingly, however, the team was still allowed to compete in the Face It Asia Minor Chinese qualifier with a stand-in. More controversy followed after the whack ban. On the day of the finals of the Asia Minor Chinese qualifier, their opponents VG Flash did not show up to play the match. Later, VG Flash claimed that somebody had broken into their house and sabotaged their internet connection. They even posted videos showing how their wires had been cut off. Eventually, Fierce Tiger was disqualified from the Asia Minor as well. But guess why? They brought in an unknown player called TB Girl in place of Leo. 
And it turns out that even TV Girl was somehow linked to another Wack Band account. Fast forward to early 2019, Flash Gaming disbanded and the owner of the team released a statement on Weibo stating that the Chinese CSGO scene has a lot more controversy that hasn't surfaced to this date. Perhaps this part of CSGO needs more investigation and maybe even a video of its own in the near future. The Forsaken Incident For the first time ever, a gaming organization conducted open tryouts to recruit a roster. Optic Gaming came to India and this was heralded as the next big thing in Indian esports. Thousands of people applied for the team, only five were chosen. One of the chosen players was Nikhil Kumavat, aka Forsaken. Now, Forsaken was formally accused of cheating and was even banned by the ESIC, but was later cleared when it surfaced that the evidence against him was not sufficient. Optic India quickly became the best team in the country. Their first ever international LAN was at the Zavi Extremes LAN 2018 in Shanghai and people had huge expectations from them. But all the dreams were shattered as Forsaken was caught using hacks on the main stage of the tournament. He hit some unreal shots there and the B5 anti-cheat detected something suspicious which prompted the admins to check his PC. When they all tapped and minimized the game, they found a command prompt window running in the background which Forsaken tried to close immediately. Upon further scrutiny, they found suspicious files titled Word.exe, which Forsaken is alleged to have deleted right in front of the admin himself. Admins ran a data recovery program and realized that the deleted files were indeed cheats. Optic India was disqualified and the organization shut down its India operations shortly after. Subscribe for more CSGO content and don't forget to click the bell icon to never miss another update. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time. I'm coming home.